so let's uh, play a little game of word association, shall we? I'm going to say a word, and I know a few of you are on road trips tonight, so I want you to say out loud the first word that comes into your head. The word is Easter. So what did you say out loud? Easter eggs, Easter bunny. Maybe you got to the heart of the story of Easter and came out with Jesus. How many of you said Bilby? When did the Bilby become Australia's version of the Easter bunny? And how much do you know about this very cute little marsupial, aside from the fact it has big ears? Chad Staples is a zookeeper at Featherdale Wildlife Park, and he joins me in the studio with a Bilby. Billy the Bilby. <laughs> Billy the Bilby. <laughs> and I said, Billy to your, uh, I said Bilby to your question, of course. Of course. <laughs> He's just... He's going to sleep. If you beautiful. Can yeah. He's, no, he's awesome. Now, just to, to give you a picture of how big he is, he's about the size of a rabbit. Yep. But he's uh, way cuter than a rabbit with big, long ears and a long snout. And, Chad, they look like very sharp little claws. Uh, sort of. They're, they're digging claws. So they are absolute experts at moving great deals of soil to find food or to dig burrows. But they're pretty soft. So yeah. where do bilbies live these days, apart from at oh, Feathertail gosh, yeah. with you? <laughs> yeah. where Their home range is actually pretty quite sad. The bilby, and it is one of those pretty tragic Australian stories, They were the land mass that they covered was probably the most expansive of any mammal ever on the continent. So they were everywhere? They were everywhere except for that east coast, if you can believe it. So where everything else was stuck on the east coast, the bilby was everything but. So they were on the other side of the range? And then... Everywhere right over, Australia. all the way across. And simply because of, you know, primarily introduced predators, they just uh, are disappearing. It's, you know, tiny little pockets, um, sort of northwest, western Australia, top of the territory. And, yeah, very isolated little pockets now, unfortunately. So when we're and talking about Queensland. introduced predators, we're yep. talking, what, foxes, cats? Foxes and cats. So they look like they'd be pretty quick, though. Can't they get away from them? Yeah, but in Australia, nothing was designed for those expert hunters like cats and, and foxes, and especially when they're hunting. So a bilby's natural defence was to dig its burrow and go to sleep, and a cat or a fox can just exploit that very simple burrow far too easily. And, I mean, uh, the cats that you now see out in sort of arid Australia are just enormous. So, it, you know, I've heard things that they eat sort of six Australian animals a night per cat, and there's like a million cats. Yeah, so native animals really have no hope. What do bilbies eat? Uh, so they are an omnivore, so l- absolutely love insects. And so a bilby's chocolate at Feathered Owl is mealworms. So I've got a little bucket of mealworms here on your, oh, so on you, your desk at the moment. You, you, so that You've bribed the bilby. Oh, so you have to. For all the parents that, you know, have kids in cars and that are using food bribery. Oh, yeah, I've got a couple of mealworms. <laughs> We're now bribing the bilby, everybody <laughs> listening. There you go. But he eats quite. Crunch away delicately out of your hand. <laughs> he, he's very well, well well, schooled on this. He's a beautiful Bilby, this guy. He's so soft. Do I they just have love personalities? Them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think once you're around any sort of animal for any length of time, you'll find a personality in them. And I mean, there's certainly a reason why Billy's the boy that I brought tonight. He's just very relaxed. He's quite calm and he's a great ambassador for his species. Now, how's he handling the bright light? Because are they largely nocturnal animals? Absolutely. But for most part, like in Australia, you're nocturnal um, for adaptation. So the food that he wants is around at that time. You escape, you know, that very intense summer heat by being asleep at, at that time. It's not like they couldn't be out in the sunlight. So no, he's okay. So if they like arid places, how, how do they go without water? Uh, so most of their f- their water would be found within the food. So uh, especially that digging, like I'm saying, if they're finding roots of any sort of vegetation they find, that's often very uh, water-filled. Same with insects. You know, there's a huge percentage of water in every insect they eat. So that's the way they do it rather than sort of free drinking. And do they hop or run? Uh, both. So their gait is... Almost like a rabbit. So if you're looking for those similarities for sort of the Easter bilby, the gait is very, very similar. So sort of the front feet forward and then the back. And if you look at the shape of the back foot, the hind leg, it's very similar as well. So it is a, it is a hop. He's so <laughs> beautiful. And he's a, bit, a little bit curious. Actually. Oh, he's, he's magic, this guy. I love him. <laughs> so is it because of their gait that they became associated with Easter? It was, we were talking about about having a bilby in the studio and, yep. and I've got no idea how they became associated with I Easter. I presume it's the years. It's just that almost 
similar to the Easter Easter bunny that you've now got an Easter bilby with those huge big ears and there's just such a cool story that goes with them because they actually flop down when they go to sleep. Their ears. So as they wake up, you can sort of see those big, huge blood vessels that are in them. Mm. As they then fill with blood again, the, the ears stand up. And they're ready for action. So, so do their ears flop over their eyes when they sleep? Is it that cute? <laughs> oh, when they're babies, absolutely it's that cute. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yep. That's ri- very cool. Now, I, I hear on a yes. not G-rated note, yep. uh, they have a little bit of stamina in the bedroom apparently, bilbies. I've heard this too. And it's something that we're actually just about to explore a little bit more at Featherdale because we had a new female arrive just yesterday. So it's a very... Obviously, with any conservation of Australian animals, it's very important and there's lots of moving parts. The biggest thing with any sort of species is genetics. So we've got two boys, which is Billy and Banjo, and so we've been housing them for about three years now, waiting for the right girl genetically to come along. And so she arrived yesterday, so very cool timing. So when bilbies have babies, do they have pouches? Yep, absolutely. Very, it's not a... A complex pouch like a kangaroo where it is almost like a pocket. It's a very simple skin fold, almost like quolls and any other type of bandicoot, if you can ever imagine. It's almost just a a fold that comes around the babies while they're small enough to be in there. And then by the time they get to sort of six weeks, they're busting out and either hanging onto mum and dad's back or mum's back or being left in the burrow. And how long do they live with mum and dad for before they get kicked out? Oh, it would depend a little bit on mum and her tolerance, but it's not long. You know, by by sort of six months, most animals are having to fend for themselves pretty much. He's getting a bit restless now. I think he's looking for the, the mealworms. Ah, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. More bribery. That's right. Oh, he was promised a bucket of mealworms and he was getting fed. So Billy speaks English, clearly. <laughs> That's right. So how are we going with, with the, the bid to conserve them? Is it, is it, is it, has the population decreased steady or are they still in a lot of trouble? No, still in a lot of trouble. And I guess there's always a different strategy for every animal. And the best strategy that we have at the moment for the bilby is um, fencing. And although that sort of sounds a bit defeatist, it is the best way to at least put a hold on the decline. Um, So there's been big moves, um, like Save the Bilby Fund is a a group that we partner with a little bit. And the big part is a predator-proof fence that bilbies can be reintroduced into and then let bilbies be bilbies and the numbers come back up. So if Billy likes the girl that's rocked up at Featherdale, how soon could it be before there are little billies Oh, very quick. Oh, really? Oh, absolutely. So marsupial... Um, gestation is about three weeks. So you're talking very quick. And given the right circumstances, uh, bilby can come into season basically all year round. Oh, so we don't have to wait for spring? No, not not necessarily at all. Like you will find there's big clusters of births because of just seasonal triggers that happen with animals, but it doesn't have to be, no. Well, Chad, let's hope that Billy likes... The female, she doesn't have a name yet. Kapari. Kapari. Okay, let's hope Billy and Kapari get on. Well, how could you not like him? He's very handsome. He's gorgeous. I'll put in a good word for him. (laughs) I'd appreciate that. (laughs) Chad, thank you so much for your time and thanks for bringing Billy in. Billy's so cute. (laughs) I wish we could have radio vision so you could could see Billy, but he's absolutely gorgeous. Chad, thank you for your your time. Chad Staples there and uh, Billy the Bilby. Chad, of course, is a zookeeper at Featherdale Wildlife Park. His little friend, Billy, was pretty excited. He's actually just gone off to have another mealworm. Uh, We're going to put a picture of Billy the Bilby on the ABC Sydney Facebook page so you can have a look.